dumbbells aren't the thing you want to be focusing on the most, but not having any dumbbells at all is a clear disadvantage. Hey guys, welcome back to Smart Simple Fit. Today, we're gonna to be doing another lecture and we're gonna be investigating why dumbbells are the key to maximizing the gains in your program because they fill the gaps in between other exercise modalities within your exercise program. I will not be trying to convince you that dumbbells are the ultimate way to train for size and strength and that you don't need any other uh, tools in your disposal, whether it's body weight exercises, weighted body weight, machines, barbells, bands, kettlebells, etc., etc., you name it. I'm not trying to convince you that these are the best exercises of all time, but rather that dumbbells as a whole, as a tool, are extremely useful in allowing you to find convenient, intelligent, practical ways for you to hit specific muscles depending on what the rest of your program looks like. And from my experience, my research from my work experience particularly, what I've realized is that the dumbbells aren't the thing you wanna be focusing on the most, but not having any dumbbells at all is a clear disadvantage and we're gonna get into why that is. I'm gonna give you guys some specific examples of what I think some of the best dumbbell exercises of all time are and why you should or could at least consider including them in your program and having these in here. You may not think of them. Some of them are very, very simple examples. They're just such practical ways to get parts of your body jacked while sparing other muscles, while saving on time and space and money. You'll see why it is that the dumbbells are just such a classic way to pump some iron. Okay, let's jump right into it. So basically the, the thesis, as I've already stated, is that these, these tools fill the gaps in your program. So if you're someone who, you know, you, you have a background that's basically like starting strength-esque or uh, something that's, uh, you know, powerlifting focused or Olympic lifting and powerlifting focused, okay, you are a student of the barbell by nature, by trade, whether that's your first few years of lifting and then you drifted away from it, or you've just been hammering out the big three plus overhead press, maybe some rowing, maybe front squats in there as well. Okay, you've been hammering out those a barbell exercise for the vast majority of your gains for very, very long time, for multiple years, okay? Or if you're someone who is a, a student of calisthenics, trying to learn some skills, trying to learn how to do front levers and front lever pull-ups and back levers and, and, and pelican curls and uh, you name it, ring dips, okay, various exercises like that. Even as a calisthenics athlete or calisthenics enjoyer, whatever you want to call yourself, the dumbbells offer various utility that you should consider using. So uh, this doesn't just come down to being the best exercise or the best exercise is. It's about finding ways to dial in what feels best for you under the current conditions, whatever your training looks like. And I would say on top of that, there are several movements where dumbbells just simply feel like the best option. That just doing it with dumbbells feels amazing. And I can think of various examples for what those are. So lateral raises are just such a practical way to grow jack delts, to get big, bolder shoulders, some cannonball deltoids, some Death Star delts, if you will. And yes, it's true that you can do this with like bands or cables or something else, even uh, easy curl bars if you're an absolute giga chad like Kiriakos Grizzly. But guys, the, the dumbbell is probably the most practical way to grow your side delts. Obviously, you can do things like various row variations, upright rowing, uh, Lou raises, yes, those will grow your shoulders, but for most people, I think it's just sensible to go up and down with some control, relatively strict reps, that they don't have to look perfect, but the dumbbell lateral raise is just, it, it's very easy to modify it. You can change where your hand is. You can make the arm more or less bent. You can make your arm more externally rotated or less. 
Um, people make a big fuss and a big stir out of doing it with your, your pinkies up. I mean, if that feels fine for you and you like that, you can go ahead and do that. I think it is true for a lot of people that won't work very well. Uh, but the point is, lateral raises are just simple. You, you can't beat them. They're so simple, they work. Curls. There's a gazillion different ways to do dumbbell curls. Reverse curls, hammer curls, supinated strict curls, spider curls, incline curls, you name it. There's a, there's a curl variation for you out there. You just haven't met your match yet. But buddy, there's plenty of fish in the sea. So if you haven't found a biceps curl variation that you've fallen in love with yet, I can almost guarantee you that there's a dumbbell biceps exercise out there just for you, waiting for you to put in the effort, make the first move. In addition to that, for something like upright rows, which is just great for growing your shoulders and your traps and things like that in general, doing it with, with dumbbells is gonna allow you to separate your hands and bring them closer together in a way that feels, uh, you know, you, it's it matches your unique anthropometry. So however your shoulders and arm leverages work out and, and mobility and whether you've had injuries to your shoulders in the past, be able to do it without a fixed grip width is a big advantage. That doesn't mean it's wrong to do it with a power bar or an easy curl bar. Plenty of people do that and it works just fine. But with the dumbbells, you do get that freedom of movement. And if you don't have access to uh, an easy curl bar, it's probably gonna feel better for a lot of people than doing it with a, a straight bar. On top of that, you have things like bench press, shoulder presses, okay, various OHP variations. Uh, you can also do chest flies, dumbbell shrugs, Romanian deadlifts, one leg Romanian deadlifts, dumbbell pullovers. These are all such classic Chad tier exercises that you could be including in your program. So if you're, if you're looking at your program, you're trying to be objective and you're thinking, you know, I need something to boost my lat volume. And let's say you don't have access to a pull down machine to do something like straight arm pull downs as, a isolation, as an ex isolation exercise for your lats. Dumbbell pullovers could be a really sweet option for those of us who are home gym uh, enjoyers, okay? So consider things like that, that it's gonna fill the gap in your program where maybe under some conditions you could use something, you'd prefer to do something else, but under the conditions you are right now, for many people, the dumbbell is the best option, okay? It just fills the gap in the program. Then you can look at something like shrugs. You don't have to do shrugs with dumbbells, so you can absolutely do it with barbells. And in fact, I'd highly recommend it, whether it's trap bar shrugs, power bar shrugs, you just deadlift the bar up and you know, very slow and control, just strictly do it. Some people uh, really strongly advocate for things like rack pulls and power shrugs. I, I don't want to uh, contest those exercises. I think they're very effective. I have less experience on those exercises than just traditional shrugs, but I get plenty of results just from normal shrugs. I don't have the biggest traps in the world, but I also don't have the biggest number of years of experience doing shrugs. I can tell you from the limited amount of time that I've been doing shrugs, my traps have been visibly growing. So there's no lack of stimulus just by doing strict reps. You don't always need this crazy weighted stretch to grow muscle. I think that's a bit of a myth for the traps. And so with, with the dumbbells, you can basically have those weights oriented however you want. You can go to the gym, you can have your dumbbell collection. It's just convenient to strap in, switch dumbbells. Okay, you can do multiple weight levels in a workout. You can switch workouts uh, very easily. And then that way, you don't have to put on and take off a bunch of plates like you would loading your deadlift. If you have a rack or uh, some sort of loading tool, or if you load your plate up onto a smaller plate, then yes, those can be easy ways to do it. But the dumbbell in a lot of ways is just a more convenient way to do those heavy ass shrugs. And in addition to all of these great variations that fill the gaps in your program, dumbbells also make a very convenient tool for warming up and finishing off an exercise routine. So if you're gonna do bench press or overhead press, if you have a pair of 20 or 30 or 40 pound dumbbells, and for you, that's relatively light, you can do 15, 20 reps and not really be very fatigued, just get a little bit of a pump, that could be a great way to just get warmed up for bench, loosen up the pectorals, loosen up the triceps, get blood rushing into the elbow joints. Okay, that's gonna feel really, really good. And you don't have to do it, but again, you can save time doing it and get a lot of effect. And then after you do that blood flow focused warm up, that convenient one, then you can start loading in heavier singles, fives, threes, however it is that you plan to warm up for whatever your specific barbell workout 
looks like the dumbbells do a great job getting warmed up and the exact same thing can be applied to overhead press, okay? And again, the same thing can be applied to rowing. You're doing heavy barbell rows or pen lays. Guess what? You can warm up by just bending over with a pair of dumbbells and doing two arms at a time or you can do one arm at a time on the bench to get a nice juicy pump, just loosen up, focus on the technique, speed through some reps, okay? And then get your body prepared for those heaviest sets, those high RPE sets. And then on the finisher side of things, again, going back to things like the pullovers, well, if you do weighted pull-ups or heavy lat pull-downs or, or even just chest-to-bar pull-ups or wide grip pull-ups, whatever the most challenging variation for your lats are that day, the the most intense vertical pulling exercise, well, later in the workout or as a, as a compound set or something to do immediately afterwards, you can go and do the pullovers to get that extra work in your lats. They're pre-fatigued from the work you've already done and the benefit of not doing the pullovers first is you're, you're not limiting your prime movers on your heaviest work where your technique matters most and the muscles being fresh arguably matters most. So using those dumbbell variations could be a great way to finish off your uh, lats. Another example would be deadlifting. A lot of people say deadlifts are all you need to grow traps. That's somewhat true, but you know what? Unless you're on steroids and you're deadlifting like six, seven, 800 pounds, you're probably not gonna have really beefy looking traps. Just if you can deadlift like 315 for five or 405 for two or something like that, you're probably not gonna have big traps. So you need to have some pretty advanced, pretty even elite numbers before I would say that deadlifting is like a significant load for your traps. Yes, it loads your traps, but having a shrug in there and some heavy overhead presses, that's probably the combination you need to see significant growth or at least the amount of growth you want. But if you did your deadlifts, especially if you're doing trap bar deadlifts, yes, that exercise gets trashed, but I think it's a perfectly valid hip hinge. Obviously it's less back dominant than conventional, but either way, let's say you finish off conventional deadlift or trap bar deadlift, then afterwards do shrugs. Hey, now you've just had a, a good, convenient, simple, practical way to finish off your traps for that particular workout. You don't have to program this way, but it's extremely sensible. It's time saving and it makes a lot of sense to train in this way. As, as I've alluded to earlier a little bit too, there's that freedom, right, with the dumbbells. So if it's the upright rows, it's the freedom of the grip width. For the bench, it's the angle, being able to move it. You can even come down wider and push up on an angle. You could come down narrow and then push up like this. You can do a lot of things that feel good to you as a unique individual, right? You don't have to be stuck in a fixed position. Not that that's always a problem, but I think too much long-term repetition, especially with heavy loading without a change in grip width and angles and lines of force and uh, experimentation. I think long-term, if you're not using enough variation, you can start to feel a little bit yucky and beat up and at least get mentally bored of the same thing over and over again. So that freedom of movement lends itself very naturally to individualization. Same thing with the Romanian deadlift. Let's say you have a lot of lower back issues. Instead of doing it with the, the dumbbells or the barbell in front of you, what you can do instead is take those dumbbells and pull them a little bit beside you on an angle or all the way neutral grip. And now you're gonna do something that looks like a trap bar deadlift, but an RDL in a sense, but not quite, not quite the leverages of the trap bar deadlift. And for some of my clients I've worked with in the past, pulling the weights a little bit closer uh, posterior uh, to the body makes a big difference on how their back feels. That doesn't mean long-term they can't deadlift conventional or something like that, but for them, early on in their program, it made a big difference in their pain. So as far as individualization goes, dumbbells are really hard to beat. And one of the, the downsides, slight downside, is the fact that it's not as stable or uh, convenient to set up, right? If you're doing bench, you gotta uh, and then uh, and then uh, and then get back on the bench with those uh, big dumbbells. It's a little bit awkward. If you can have someone help you or spot you or give you your second dumbbell or something like that, that's a little bit better. And sure, something like a, a, a biceps curl or shrug, you pretty much just pull it off the rack or from the floor, do your work and then put it back. It's not as big of a deal. So if you're setting up for overhead press, something like that, right? But you can imagine something like a goblet squat. Okay, there's a limit to how heavy you're gonna load that. You're not gonna be realistically doing that with 120 pounds. 
maybe if you're an absolute animal, but for most people, that's just not realistic. While at the same time, there's a lot of people who can do front squats with 135 for reps, right? Similar leverages, one's a lot more safe and practical to set up. But what you do gain, okay, you lose a little bit of, you know, stability and practicality as far as setup goes. You, what you gain is quick, easy, efficient, okay? You get down, you put those dumbbells on, you sit down, you do your reps, boom, drop the weights. It's no big deal. You don't have to worry about this meticulous, you know, racking and unracking of the weight, changing it to get all these precise numbers. And sure, it's only consuming a little bit of time, but you know what? That speed and efficiency in your workout, it can actually save minutes over multiple sets and multiple exercises. So having some dumbbell exercises in your training give you something that's, you know, it's quick. It's very accessible to set up. Yes, the consequences are, it could be iffy. <laughs> if taken to an extreme level, like that heavy goblet squat or too heavy of a, a dumbbell bench if you're not ready for it, or uh, you go to failure, or you, you drop one weight first and then you fall over because you didn't have it balanced properly. Sure, there's things that can go wrong, but it's very, very convenient. And then further on, I would say, if I were to narrow down the categories of people who would benefit most, I would say people who are like just kind of overall just going to the gym and experimenting with different things. They use a mix of barbells and dumbbells and machines and calisthenics. There's not really a need to emphasize because chances are you've already found sort of a balance between which ones you gravitate towards. Maybe you really like the leg press over squatting and you like the uh, barbell bench press over the machines and you like the preacher curl machine over the dumbbells and etc. The list goes on, right? So maybe for someone who's just recreationally training, more of like a bodybuilding sort of recreational approach to lifting, sure, maybe there's less to emphasize as far as uh, optimizing, dare I say, optimizing your program with dumbbells, filling in those gaps, really refining your program, being time efficient, being individualized, and etc. But for someone like, a, uh, again, that example of the powerlifting athlete, well, if they don't have curls in there, they don't have the shrugs, they don't have dumbbell calf raises, they don't have dumbbell upright rows, they don't have any dumbbell benching, anything like that, I think you'll find that if you're if you're more focused on like the, the barbells, the dumbbells will really upgrade. They'll be a perfect accessory to your program. It just makes sense to fill in a few things, whether it's your warm-ups, your finishers, a volume day of dumbbell bench work. These are going to be extremely helpful for you. You will learn to love them quickly. Again, it's not that there's a perfect way to train, it's just that these offer advantages as tools, so much so that I think you're missing out on maximizing your gains if you're not including any of them. And the second category, I've already mentioned them as well, the calisthenic folks. Imagine if you could do, in addition to your all your cool curl and body weight rowing and pull-up variations, just some good old-fashioned dumbbell curls. Guys, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with free weights, okay? And don't be scared of other calisthenic enjoyers judging you for not being a purist. You're allowed to cheat on your program or your, your weight training philosophy in that sense. You can still be mostly a calisthenics person, but you don't have to exclusively train one modality. That mindset may hold you back to some degree. And yes, we have to name a few downsides real quick. Obviously, there's a large jump in one weight from another. You have to go from 50 to 55 or from 80 to 90 pounds often. There's not always that perfect five pounds in between. And sometimes in recent years, you'll find a 27.5 or 22.5, and that's very convenient for progressively overloading curls. And so if you have access to that, I'd recommend you take advantage of it. That could be from adjustable dumbbells used uh, or ones that you find in the gym. Uh, but other than that, for a lot of exercises, it is a bit of a pain in the butt to have to jump up five pounds. So be prepared to work with the weight until you can do it for fairly high reps, maybe 12 to 20, before you upgrade to something that you can do for five to 10. Okay, and that also depends on RPE and uh, how experienced you are. If you're a beginner, you'll upgrade to a new dumbbell faster, but that's not the point. Now, the overall cost and the need to build a collection, if you're going to have like five to 10 pairs of dumbbells or 10 to 20 pairs, it's gonna be very expensive, but if you just have three or four or five or six pairs of dumbbells, not necessarily gonna set you back a whole lot of money. Depends on what you're looking for. Again, I'm just saying you fill your gaps. I'm not saying you have to have every weight and every exercise uh, <laughs> option available using dumbbells. The storage requires a rack or a plate tree or some kind of a mess. You know, I, I, I have a sort of a home gym setup where I just kind of neatly organize it. I'm gonna get a plate tree soon. 
or I, well, I have a plate tree for my plates, but a, a dumbbell tree for my dumbbells, and that should you know clean things up a little bit. I do go to my way to kind of make it look neat and nice and put things uh, in order, but by the end of a workout where I do three or four dumbbell exercises, it gets all over the place, and now I have to clean up the mess again. The having something to organize is maybe not a necessity, but aesthetically or as far as your habits are concerned, it's a good idea. And then of course, as I already mentioned, there's that uh, the downside of the setup being a little bit iffy, dumbbells being bulky. Sometimes you actually lose range of motion. I would say on shoulder press, you lose range of motion because you have this big dumbbell, whereas the barbell, you can manipulate your body around it much easier. So those are the, the, you know, the small handful of trade-offs. Those are my favorite examples. <laughs> you already know that Arnold over here endorses it. He's pumping iron. It feels great. He's coming every day. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you. Consider using some dumbbells in your training to level it up, to fill in the gaps, to refine your program, to maximize your gains. These are such helpful tools. To not include them is a foolish errand. I hope you learned something today. Stick around for another Smart and Simple lecture, and I'll see you guys next time.